Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jesse Butler. I'm an advocate with OCI, and I'm really glad after Paul's talk that I'm here to non-ironically talk about serverless. Um, <laughs> thanks, Paul. That was cool. Um, but this, yeah. <laughs> These are sort of concepts that are near and dear to me because I've been working with containers for a long time uh, before Docker and cloud came along and we said there's lots of ways to go to the cloud and lots of options, but really only a couple work, right? So this microservices in containers thing seems to be a standard and serverless is becoming a real thing. Even if you think it's just a buzzword, people are building really substantial, very large things. And no, it's not always simpler. But for developers, that's a really great workflow, and the scalability story is pretty compelling. Um, so we see this slide a lot when we try to explain what serverless is. So it's a spectrum, right? It starts with Kubernetes and containers. It goes through Cloud Run into uh, your, you know, your DIY you know, open source fast projects, and then finally the serverless. So everybody know what a duck test is? If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. This is a serverless duck test. Right? We give a platform some code, we tell it when to run, it runs it and only bills us when it runs. So serverless isn't really actually uh, this big spectrum of stuff. Though all the stuff over there that does pass the duck test is built on that stuff. And there are other aspects of it that work like Cloud Run. But when we're talking about serverless, uh, as was referenced before, we're really talking about managed serverless platforms. Under the covers, there's a lot of stuff that we would recognize, right? as DevOps professionals, as systems people, as people that are you know, about running workloads at scale, we're using a lot of the same stuff under the covers. But it's all abstracted away, and that's why developers love it. Again, it's not simple, nothing's for free, you have to put the work in, but the platform's really compelling, and it's kind of converged with this architecture, which is cool. Our abstractions are converging, right? We have a platform and an architecture that work together. Ops really dig this because it keeps the developers off their infrastructure. Nobody has to SSH into anything and screw it up, right? But also, you tend to have less, less dependencies, and I should say less unmanaged dependencies. And the OPEX is, uh, is, can be really actually significant. But where does serverless come in? Because we see this like battle royale pitching, and I just don't buy it. Because fundamentally, we're doing a lot of things in serverless under the covers um, in the platform that makes sense to DevOps folks. But it's the platform that we actually have to let go of. If you want to adopt serverless, you're giving up a place where you do a lot of the practice of DevOps. Um, and that can feel really awkward, right? It can feel like I have all these things that I do in this context that I'm very familiar with and you're taking the frigging context away from me. How am I relevant? But the reality is, is that the skills that we've a, 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 you know, built up around DevOps are more uh, necessary than ever. Anybody running Kubernetes? Anybody running manage Kubernetes? It is a similar paradigm, right? We take the hard thing and we pass it off the hardness to a managed platform and we run a credit card and say, you do the hard bits, I'm gonna focus on the smart stuff. And that's where we get to DevOps, right? Because DevOps isn't a technology, it's a methodology, it's a set of practices. And we've, you know, we keep advancing this space. But DevOps in systems, especially complex distributed systems, is about learning from the system itself, pushing it to its bounds, maybe breaking it sensibly, learning from that breakage, applying the things we learn, putting it back in, just like Jordy did all the time, right? And so we see this battle that's pitching and it's really not real because serverless just becomes another tool, right? We have all of these tools we use. Serverless just has to, happens to have a, an architecture attached to it and it depends on this managed platform. But we use managed CI CD we use managed config management, right? So configuration management's especially important in serverless because once you deploy, you pretty much let go of any influence you have. So you actually need to pay attention to how much mass you add to something. Otherwise, you end up in, in big trouble. Observability is another huge thing that we need, right? Because if you think running Kubernetes at scale uh, gets you lots of log files, you ain't seen nothing. Um, we've established these kind of three pillars of observability, right, with metrics, tracing, and logs. You just get logging pretty much uh, unless you're going to a managed service and unless you're applying everything else we've learned and every invocation of a function gets you a log. So how about like millions and millions of them? Um, so we really have to apply a lot of that segmented pillared sort of observability stuff. And these are just examples. These are just, you know, there's so many DevOps practices and principles that apply. There's no serverless DevOps, it's just DevOps. So keep DevOpsing and look to serverless as just another black box to offload some, some, uh, some toil. Thank you very much. <laughs>